Hey, what's going on dudes? So a few days ago on Monday, I released a video called five things you didn't know about solitude. And uh, the video did really good. I'm, I'm really happy with the numbers. I'm really happy with the like to dislike ratio. It's, it's everything is going well. The comments are amazing. Uh, thing is, I, I noticed that a few of you got stuck on, on something that I said during the video that I think is rather fascinating. Uh, so in the video, I said, that Ulfric murdered High King Toric. And a lot of you, and I noticed you guys, a lot of you uh, resented me for saying murdered, claiming that the killing was actually lawful, that Ulfric was in his right to, to kill Toric. And so when I said the word murder, of course, that implies unlawful killing. Uh, you guys, you know, lashed out at me. And I'm really interested. I'm really interested in having this discussion because I think it's a really good one to have and a great one for a video. So uh, let's start by just sort of putting on the basis. And by the way, I don't think I particularly... Uh, I, I maybe would have chosen a different word for it uh, now that I, you know, sort of see that you guys took that word very seriously, but just the basics. What actually happened? So, Ulfric Stormcloak went into Solitude. Uh, they allowed him in, of course, he's a Jarl. Uh, they respect him. You see, you have to understand, Ulfric is a hero. <laughs> it's sort of everyone knows Ulfric. Um, he's sort of been in the stories. He's kind of a big deal in Skyrim. Um, but uh, during the moot that had High King Toric elected to become the High King, he was very vocal about the fact that he didn't like the Empire and he wanted Skyrim to secede from it. So everyone sort of knew that this was Ulfric's position. Um, so when Ulfric went knocking into Solitude, everyone thought that he was going to ask Hiking Toric to become independent. That's what everyone thought. So, you know, they, they go into court, everyone sits down and, and, and they wait for uh, Ulfric to have his argument. Turns out he doesn't actually ask, he demands, but he demands it by uh, ushering a duel. Now, it is a Nordic custom in Skyrim, It's this is like old tradition, that if a Jarl... Uh, if a Jarl goes into court and he demands a duel from the High King, the High King must accept. That's just tradition, that's just something that has been going on for centuries. Um, and yeah, uh, High King Toric, he accepts the duel, he gets completely wrecked, and Ulfric essentially runs away from the scene. And that's when Rockveer gets, you know, he's the guard that sort of lets Ulfric out. And when you go into Solitude for the first time, you can see him being executed for essentially allowing whoever killed the High King, you know, getting him free. Uh, and then they execute him. And everyone seems to be happy with it. Clearly, Solitude is an empire sort of, you know, friendly environment. Um, but let's talk about, so is this, would you consider this a lawful kill, or would you consider this an unlawful kill? So let's talk about all the diverging points, all the different discussions and arguments that you can have. So from the baseline, let's just go pure basic here. The Empire is, it currently owns Skyrim. That means that the Empire's laws supersede the laws of Skyrim. So it's like the federal government with states, right? The, the, the empire says, all right, well, now you cannot drink mead. It doesn't really matter what the, what, what Skyrim wants. It doesn't matter what the Jarls want. It doesn't matter what the High King wants. Mead is outlawed. That's just what it is, right? It, and it's always been the case. Um, but the beauty of the Civil War and the beauty of uh, Skyrim as a game, especially in, in this particular uh, factoid, is that it's it, it, the subjective matter is, is never that easy. It's never that simple. You see, and, and this is one of the tricky points, right? High King Toric accepted the duel. And I think this has very wide implications. You see, Morrowind also has a king. However, the king in Morrowind is specifically handpicked by the Empire. The Empire says, you. I want you to be the king of Morrowind, and then that guy just becomes the king, right? Like he's literally a representative from the Empire. Now he, the type of rules that he can, that that he has access to, the type of things, the type, type of power that he can get access to, it's not quite as big as, say, the High King of Skyrim, but it is a title the Empire is allowed to give a person in Morrowind. Um, in Skyrim, however, it is very different. You see, 
the Jarls actually get to choose who is the High King. And now typically, and this is also true with the Jarls, it's all hereditary. If your father was a Jarl, if your father was the High King, then um, you sort of become the, the High King or the Jarl. Now, that is 100% true for the Jarls. For the High King, there's, there still has to be a moot. The mood gets together and they essentially make the ritual of like, okay, fine, you will be the High King. But honestly, for the most part, as far as what we have been made to understand is that 99% of the time, it is the daughter or the son of the High King that becomes the High King, right? That was the case with High King Torik. His father, Islod, was the High King. He ended up passing away and the mood convened and they gave it to High King Torik. Even though he was the true heir, the mood still has to happen. So... Skyrim is supposed to be self-governed, uh, it's independent. The Jarls are Nords and they decide who the High King is. The High King, of course, in this case chosen by Nords, would be a Nord that would have Skyrim's best interest in mind, right? Well, maybe not quite so, but we'll get to that in just a second. High King Torik is was chosen by all the Jarls. So, in essence, he has control over the region. His, his voice is, is law, essentially, as long as he doesn't supersede Empire law. Now, he accepted the duel. He knew it was going to happen. He knew that Ulfric was going to completely destroy him. I mean, everyone knew Ulfric. Ulfric is a legend in Skyrim. Torik, he's not a warrior. Of course he's going to get destroyed. He knew that, yet he accepted, which I think is fascinating. And, and, and when, when, you, when you talk about the High King being the the ruler, he's the guy that makes the laws, and he accepts the duel, I feel like that has power, right? And especially so because when you go to Sovngarde, he's actually there, and you can talk to High King Torek, and he tells you, hey, look, my honor is unstained. I accepted that duel, I knew exactly what was going to happen, and still I did it, because you know what? I am a Nord, guts damn it. <laughs> and, I, um, and, and, and that's just what we do, right? So it's almost as if he doesn't really hold any anger towards Ulfric. Now he does say, uh, my honor is unstained, but can Ulfric say the same? And I find that very interesting, because even though clearly he respects Ulfric a, a lot, and by the way, that's something that gets talked about a lot when you go to Solitude and you talk to, you go into the Blue Palace and you talk to all those court attendants and you know everyone in that court, um, everyone says that Torik really respected Ulfric, which is really cool. But he, he definitely mentioned that his honor was unstained, but can, can Ulfric say the same? Th that, that twist has me thinking, right? And, and this goes to the main, I think it's the, one of my main um, concerns with the duel. Because the duel is supposed to be valid. It's supposed to be Nordic tradition. This is what happens. You go into court, you talk to the High King, you say, hey, I want to duel you. That has to happen, right? That's law. That's well, Nordic law. Are you actually allowed to use the shout? Because that is the part that has me struggling. And I want you guys, if you guys have any indication uh, if that's the case or not, then please let me know. I, I think that would be a great discussion to have. Because I really do wonder, because clearly as much as Torik respected Ulfric, and clearly he didn't seem to want to, you know, in quotes, press any charges, which I think is a very valid point. He says that Ulfric lacks honor. But, but he didn't say that specifically, he just, he just almost like, like there was a doubt, you know, can Ulfric say the same, like there was some doubt to it. So there's clearly like some subjective line that we have to cross there. But is he allowed to cast the shout? Right, so we, we know from traditions that the shout is not meant to be used for war. It's not supposed to be an instrument of war, it's supposed to be an instrument of, of uh, sort of getting, elevating yourself so that you can like venerate the gods. That's the whole teaching. When you go to the Grey uh, Beers and you talk to them, that's the first thing they tell you. Hey, you're not supposed to use this to increase your power. This is only a method for you to understand the gods and get close to them. That's You're only supposed to use it to venerate Kinnereth, right? Yet he used it for, for war, essentially. Um, and I wonder, is that allowed? Because if not, then clearly Ulfric broke the rules, right? And it's interesting because he, Ulfric actually, he actually mentions uh, a little hesitation. When you talk to him, he actually does hesitate a little bit, claiming that he, he shouldn't have used the voice. And, and, and I think that's also very interesting. Um, but you guys can let me know in the comments what you think about that particular thing, which I think is, you know, worth discussing. But um, 
One of the things that Ulfric also mentions that I think has a lot of value is, see, the reason why he he didn't really see Torek as a true Nord and he wanted to kill him. Uh, notice that I didn't say murder anymore, it's just say kill. <laughs> He um he believes that there hasn't been a true high king in Skyrim for centuries. But what does that mean, right? Because again, at the beginning of the video, we talked about the fact that the Jarls choose the high king, and the Jarls are hereditary. Um, so it's all Nords, right? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. Normally, yes, Jarls choose the high king, and the Jarls are hereditary. However, what happens when a Jarl uh, doesn't have any heirs? And he dies and doesn't have any wife. Usually the wife, you know, becomes the Jarl or the husband becomes the uh, the Jarl. In the case that he doesn't have any heirs, doesn't have any wife or husband, the council in the empire actually gets to choose who the Jarl is. So if something happens to Ulfric and he has no sons, he has no wife, it is actually some group of dudes in the council in the Empire, in Zero Deal, that gets to choose who becomes the Jarl of Windhelm. And that's the part that I'm pretty sure is pissing off Ulfric. Now, to be fair, Jarls do have the ability to be part of the Council, but for the most part, the Council is made of members that are also out, just, just people that have nothing to do with Skyrim. And those people are actually choosing who the Jarls are here if something were to happen. That is definitely not the Nordic way of doing things. Now, the question would be, okay, fine, so that's something that can happen, but has it actually happened? Is there cause for Ulfric to be upset about this? See, the answer is yes. Why? Because in Falkreath, it actually happened, technically. We don't really know. You know, the game doesn't really give us that much, but... Um, <laughs> the Jarl of Falkreath is called Sidgare. He... You know, as far as the beginning of Skyrim of the timeline, he actually supplanted his his uncle. His uncle, I don't remember. Ah, uh, Dugir, Dagir, some some. It's very similar in names. I don't remember his name, but he used to be the um, the Jarl of, of Falkreath. But he was getting kind of old, and he supported. He was like an old Nord, like a legit Nord, right? Seager was put there according to his uncle by the Empire, by the uh, uh, by, by the Legion to have someone in Falkreath that would benefit the Empire. And of course, when you do the civil quest line, Sigir actually follows the Empire. And uh, it's I think it's one of those examples. We're not told specifically how his selection was chosen, if it was the council that actually chose him, and uh, but, but it's very likely. It sort of suggested that it, that was probably the case. Um, now, I don't have any indication that has, that has specifically happened anywhere else. Um, you know, there's a few Jarls that support the Empire, but, you know, the Jarl of Markarth, I'm pretty sure he's just doing it for the money. Markarth is the city in Skyrim that I believe has the most trade outside of Solitude, um, you know, with, with uh, all the other provinces because of the silver mines, right? So I'm pretty sure he's just in it for the money. Um, the <laughs> Morthal, honestly, I don't think she has any influence at all. I don't think she really matters. Uh, so... It's, um, I think the fact that it happened in Falkreath is, is sort of makes it come to light, the fact that it is very possible that it has happened in other locations. So when Ulfric says, hey, these are puppet, uh, you know, leaders, I, he, he does have an argument to be made. That being said, I mean, High King Torek's father, even Ulfric called him a true Nord, so I don't think that's the case there. But I think there are some very interesting conversations to be had in this particular concept. So let's just go back to the initial topic at hand. Was this murder or was this a just kill? I think um, the first question would just be, was the shout legal or not? If the shout wasn't legal, then you broke the law, Ulfric, right? And you sort of like, you, you know what I mean? Like that, that's when you lose me. Um, but outside of that specific factor, I think the fact that High King Torek specifically accepted the duel he knew what was going to happen, and he doesn't seem to hold any hatred towards Ulfric. And look, come on guys, you you know how Nords work. If you die in combat, you get to go to Sovngarde. Like, that's your entry level to heaven. <laughs> so Ulfric is probably up there in Sovngarde drinking mead, eating, you know, some, some venison and, and brawling and having a grand old time thanks to Ulfric that essentially made it so that he would die in combat, right? Like, Torek is fine, so I don't think he has any reason to hate Ulfric. So... I don't think he's really would like to press any charges if that makes any sense. Honestly, I don't think so. So, um, 
in that respect, I think it was a lawful kill. I think as far as far as Nordic tradition, I think it's fine. Um, but I think there are arguments to be made in... Oh, my computer did something weird. Anyways, I think there are arguments to be made on both sides. So, uh, but I think I, I want to hear what you guys have to say. I want to hear your arguments. I want to see, because this is one of those points, man, that I feel like there's there's contention, you know? There, there are arguments to be made on both sides, and, and, and there really isn't like a very obvious you know, path to choose here. That's the beauty of the Civil War in Skyrim, that it's it's legitimately interesting and people can pick sides and it doesn't feel like you're just picking sides for the fun of it, right? Like, there, there are legitimately um, good points to be made. So let me, let me hear what you guys have to say about this. And yeah, thank you so much, Bryson, Alexander, and Baker Dillon for helping me out on Patreon on the $25 level. And if any of you guys would like to help me out as well, and I would love you forever for it, uh, make sure to head on over to patreon.com slash Rax and yeah, just give whatever you have, it's cool. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.